Hello everyone and welcome back to Work in the Verse. Thor here and in this episode of There's More Than Just Meta VR News, we're going to dive into Pimax's recent Frontier 2024 event. Meta continues rolling on with announcements and the latest updates from Apple and recent speculation about what's coming next and when. Pimax came out swinging for the fences this year with their Pimax Frontier event. In addition to hyping up how well the crystal has been received, which was last year's flagship headset, they introduced the Pimax 60D Airlink. The Airlink addresses one of the key problems that PC VR enthusiasts encounter, and that's the breakdown of immersion due to cable fear, which is where you're always thinking about how much length you have, where it might get caught up on, and so on. Other wireless solutions have been hampered by compression and quality of connection. This device should make it possible to support the full resolution of the headset at 2880 by 2880 providing a 90 hz refresh rate with ultra-low latency, and still provide sessions from 2 to 3 hours in length. At this time, it will only be compatible with a crystal, and should be shipping sometime around the third quarter. If you have a crystal, will you be the first in line to get it? If you're thinking about getting the crystal, will this make it more tempting since you can get a discount? Let us know in the comments. In addition to the Airlink, Crystal also announced two headsets one for those looking for a headset in the upper echelons of capability, and one for those who want to get into PC VR without breaking the bank. The Pimax Crystal Super takes the crystal to the next level by having 29.5 million pixels and achieving a 3840 by 3840 per eye, which makes it just a bit better than the Apple Vision Pro. Lenses used are aspheric and are supported by a mini LED back panel with 912 zones per eye for local dimming. In addition, there will be interchangeable lenses that support Pimax's auto IPD adjustment along with dynamic foveal rendering. Inside-out tracking is accomplished with four external cameras and for those who want better tracking, an optional replaceable front cover can be used with Lighthouse base stations. With all this innovation, it comes in at a surprising low $17.99, which is hard to say without a smile, but thanks to Apple, it does seem a bit more reasonable, doesn't it? Now, it wouldn't be a Pimax event without them taking a page out of Apple's book, which is the one more thing. If you decide to buy the crystal, you have an option of going with micro OLED, QLED lenses, or both. The QLED version is $17.99, micro OLED is $19.99, and for both in one package, $23.99. And similar to years past, if you already own the crystal, they'll entice you to get the super by throwing in a $3.99 discount. Pimax is also looking for those of us with a budget more in the range of a Quest 3, but want a better overall experience by offering the Pimax Crystal Lite. It's strictly a PC VR headset that will need to be wired directly to your computer, but at least visually speaking, should be a step or two above the Quest 3. At $699, they have to scale back significantly, but you still get a lot with a headset weighing 30% less than the Crystal. No need for a battery as it will get the power through the DisplayPort cable attached to your PC, and similar aspheric lenses to the crystal, but a lower PPD count at 35 with 2880 by 2880 per eye. Tracking will be done through inside out, so no complicated setup needed either. Pimax also realizes that you may not have a super high-end capable PC, so they've added fixed foveated rendering, upscaling, and last but not least, refresh rates ranging from 60 to 120 Hz. Shipping for the crystal light is expected at the end of May this year. Meta had a great April for announcements, and it looks like they have more to shout about. Right on the heels of version 64, 65 is looking at building upon their successes. Not to let their pass-through charges stay idle, version 65 is supposed to bring more improvements. But first, it's worth noting that their AR division is taking another shot at establishing their dominance in wearables. Android Central's Nicholas Sutrich had an opportunity to speak with Caitlin C.K. Kalinowski, who has two decades of product design experience from the MacBook through many of Oculus's innovations. Kalinowski believes that what they're working on could be the I can't believe this moment that AR needs to bring more people into the fold. Project Nazare, which is assuredly not Meta's Ray-Ban solution, will have a better pass-through experience than the upcoming Quest 3's Augments feature to enhance the pass-through experience, which was announced at last year's Meta Connect event, and may see the light of day this fall. It's expected Project Nazare will be much better as they'll be using micro OLEDs to project onto a pair of wearables, so what you see will be similar to how you experience looking through a pair of sunglasses. It won't be the same pass-through experience like the Quest 3 uses today. They're also thinking about AI differently. Instead of just how can generative AI be used, but how can it make the user experience better? 
For example, it looks like Meta has figured out how to make room mapping faster and more effective while reducing power consumption to do so. It looks like we'll have to be patient, though, as Kalinowski thinks it'll be another three years before we see this latest innovation. Now about that version 65, Meta is focusing on some iPhone improvements, perhaps to catch the Apple Vision Pro team by surprise. First feature is the ability to upload video through the MetaQuest mobile app directly to the Quest 3. You'll need an iPhone running iOS 17 or later. You'll also be able to do the same with panoramic photos captured as well. It's difficult to say if any of these features will be available for Android users, but with Apple's push to spatial video, it's not hard to imagine that Android will have something similar. In more meta news, last week's announcement of the Horizon OS being made available to third-party developers was just the starting point. It seems that Meta wants to copy Apple by making it possible to port over 2D applications. As reported by David Heaney from Upload VR, there will be a spatial framework that should make it much simpler than having to use a game engine for less complicated apps. This may also be a play for Meta to convince Google to open up the Google Play Store for Quest users. Although the opening up of the Horizon OS seemed positive, not all were on board. John Carmack, who left Meta last year, thinks that maybe this won't be as positive. For starters, other companies will be able to provide more specialized and high-end devices that Meta won't be able to compete with as they'll have to release novel, new hardware systems from their research pipeline for their high-end systems, which is going to lead to poor decisions, according to Carmack. Carmack went on to say that Meta will have to spend more time and resources on making an OS that not only supports third parties, but also ensures that changes made won't break others' offerings while maintaining good communication with the different companies. So what do you think? Is Carmack right about opening up the OS as a negative rather than a positive? Wrapping up this episode, it's time to check in on Apple. Last week, several news outlets picked up on supply chain analyst Ming-Chi Kuo's claims that Apple was reducing production for the Apple Vision Pro by 40% due to weak demand. The sales estimate from outsiders believed that there would be 700,000 to 750,000 units, and that would drop to 400,000 to 450,000 units. As David Heaney from Upload VR reports, these numbers don't add up when you look at Quo's previous analysis and that several outlets reported on availability constraints on Sony being able to produce the displays in the Apple Vision Pro. The amount quoted was 400,000 to 600,000 units. Something isn't adding up here, and with Apple being typically quiet on production numbers, we may never know. Before we start speculating on Apple not having a sibling for their headset in 2025, David Heaney on May 5th quoted Chinese news outlet Wall Street CN saying that their cheaper and lighter Vision headset could be seen as early as June 2025. For this to happen, manufacturing will have to scale quickly. Considering the limited display availability for the Apple Vision Pro, if Apple were to make more budget headsets available, they'll likely need to go with a different display type or a different lens supplier, such as Chinese lens suppliers BOE and SIA technology. Heaney went on to call out that Apple appears to be flummoxed in trying to get the pricing down, so we'll have to wait and see if Wall Street CN's prediction will hold true that Apple will be able to produce at a scale of tens of millions of units. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, keep working the verse.